Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Commander in Chief of the Kenyan Defense Forces, uh, the Honorable Members of Parliament, all our leaders who are here and the family members, uh, may I very humbly request the members of Governor Nyagarama's family who are in this audience to stand up. Excellency, this is, uh, yes, these are the two youngest sons of the government. And uh, a part of the family has already gone home. We have to prepare for the funeral. And then we have three children who are on the BA day flight to Nairobi from the UK. So this is, this is the family. And Mama, there are some, please be seated. There are some the leaders who are here, cousins, the brothers, aunties. Uh, it's a big African family in the nature of big African families. And uh, probably that's why Mzee Nyagaramo was a guy of a big heart. He loved everybody because he came from a big family. And so before I say a word, Mama Ida, since we have a very rare opportunity to condole with these leaders, may you kindly please say just one word before I invite the president, please. Your Excellency. Your Excellency, we thank you very much for coming to condole with the family of Governor Nyangarama. To all those who are here, we lost a great man. He was a humble man. He was a caring man. But he's left his legacy in the community. And the legacy is what will out to be great. Those who are coming after him, remember to have him as your guiding star, right. what he was doing, how he was doing, and in that way, we wish you well back in Yamira and wherever you'll be. Thank you very much, and may the Lord rest his soul in eternal peace. Thank you. Your Excellency, uh, the President, I want to make just two points uh, before you speak to us this morning. First of all, I want to thank you very sincerely, sir. For the many years I have known you and for the many years I've worked with you, I know this and I want to say it very openly here as I've said it somewhere else before. Sometimes it's very humbling how you're very personal, you have got feelings for people, uh, given the enormity of the responsibility you carry as our head of state, sometimes it's shocking how you pay attention to even small details about people, about how people are doing, how you care for people across the country. Uh, several times, as Governor Nyagarama was in hospital, you called me several times and asked me, how is uh, uh, Muse doing? And I know that there's a time that morning when we were going to Embakasi, I genuinely also hoped that I was going to see him uh, that day because you looked a little bit impatient with me that I was giving you secondary information I had not been able to see. Then I genuinely told you that I had actually spoken to Mama and she had told me that he was going for physio. So then we were going to have an opportunity to see him. And even as we were to the military function, you kept asking me whether I had spoken to the family, whether I had an idea about uh, his condition. So the fact that, as our head of state, you are also personal with us, and that you care for people individually, it is a big example. And, and, and for you, sir, I know leadership is beyond the usual perfunctory things of making speeches and the glamour of office. You have redefined leadership in our country because of your care. And your presence here today, and what you are doing here, uh, it's testament of your strong feelings and respect and relationship you have with our people. I, I know when the late uh, Henry Obocha died, and these leaders know, we had a problem, we were going to have a challenge with burying Henry Obocha. But Your Excellency, you graciously called us in the morning, and you told me uh, Henry was a great man, he served this country as a minister, the government will bury Obocha. And when I spoke to you on Friday, when this had happened, uh, you told me immediately, no hesitation, we will take responsibility. So you and your peers, 
take charge. And so we don't take these things for granted because Your Excellency could have just played your official role, given us a donation and walked on and said, you know, we can carry on with our business of managing our affairs. But you have personally been involved. I know you have required of me daily briefings and I briefed you daily on how we are going with the funeral. And I can report once again here that I think we have all come together as a community. You told me on Saturday that your desire was, you hoped, I know how you feel for us as a people. And I know how close you feel you are with us as a people. So I thank you very sincerely as a citizen of this country and as a privileged member of this community who has the rare privilege of serving in your government. Secondly, sir, I promise on behalf of these wonderful good people here that we have had a meeting, all of us, and agreed that we are going to conduct ourselves decently. And the last point I want to make is this, in the full view of these people. In an environment and in a context of death of decency, you know sometimes in politics you think decent, decent died. In Yagarama distinguished himself for being just plainly a decent man. I asked the MPs this morning when we met, which one of them can remember a function where Governor Nyagarama spoke for five minutes? And none of them could remember. Whether it was a funeral or public function, Muse Nyagarama arrived there, spoke decently for two, three minutes, and took his seat. And he, he never had, I never in my entire life, in public life, I've been with Muse Nyagarama. I have never seen him quarrel with anybody. I've never seen him argue with anybody. I've never seen him criticize anybody or disagree with people, even when he had strong feelings about people. Even when people sometimes actually were unfair to him, I must say, he always maintained gentility and decency and all that. So, sir, I undertake on behalf of my colleagues, and they can commit here that we have agreed that we are not going to discredit his send-off. We will follow in the footsteps you have shown us, being decent and doing things the right way. And we will also do this the right way. Finally, your Excellency, you have asked me that after this is done, I convene a meeting, first with the family, then they see you, then second with these leaders, so that we all, as the Deputy Governor says, face in the same direction. So, sir, we feel comforted, we feel supported, we feel strengthened because of your care for us, and we thank the Lord for you, for the leadership you have provided to us. We are all the better, all the more stronger and comforted because of the leadership you have shown. So my brothers and sisters, I want to ask you to join me. Uh, sad though this occasion is, to welcome His Excellency, our beloved President, to speak to us and condole the family. Your Excellency, sir. Mama. The Rama, the children, and our late beloved brother, my older sister, Yongozi. We are here today to condole in this family over the sudden and most unfortunate loss of our dear colleague and brother, the governor of the Amira, a loss not just to the people of the Amira, the Abanusi community, but without a doubt, a loss to the entire country. Indeed, as has been said by those who spoke before, Zen Yagarama was a person of the greatest decency. A dignified, a humble man, but yet a very straightforward man. A man who was concerned about his people and about the welfare of his people. 
a man who was always joyful and would never hesitate to go out of his way if he found somebody in need. He had a great heart for people. Indeed, as has been said, I have never heard a harsh word come out of his mouth. Even at times and at functions where I have seen things not necessarily go smoothly, he calm, very calm. He observed and allowed things to move on. That was the kind of man he was. And like I'm saying, he will be a great loss, not just to the people of Nyamir, but to the country as a whole. I know for sure we shall miss his wise counsel in the summit, where his contributions were always recognized. And I remember, especially in our first time, when things were getting difficult between the national government and the leadership of the Council of Governors, he would always try and bring things to together, bring people together. How can we find a solution? How can we find a way forward? Let us not waste our energies arguing with each other. We are all here serving for the same purpose. Showing you the kind of human being he was. So I'm here to condole with you. I'm here to join you in your sorrow. I'm here to pledge once again my support to this family and to tell them and to assure them that they are not alone, that we shall continue to walk the journey together. And whatever it is that you shall require from us, please do not hesitate to let us know. We are here to also reaffirm to you the leaders of Nyamira of our continued support and to ensure that the programs and plans that he had are seen to fruition. But that can only happen if you yourselves also come together and agree that you are going to march in one direction and you shall march together. And I'm sure that that is what he himself would have wished, would have hoped, and would have prayed for. And we're here to once again tell you that we will be behind you, and whatever again you require, in order to ensure that that happens, count on our support. As your first governor, I'm looking forward, and I'm appealing to you all to look for something that we can do together, that we live for future generations and for people to remember that there was indeed, once upon a time, the first governor of a great county who laid the foundation for its future prosperity. And that one, I'm more than happy for us to come together, to work together and to see what is it that we can do to have that in place. <laughs> Lastly, I think as has been said by everybody, we know this Muse as a man of honor. A man who didn't have an unkind word for anybody. A man who had no ill will towards anybody. Jameni, do not turn tomorrow into a circus. Give the man his honor. Give him his dignity, give him his respect. It is very unfortunate what we are seeing happening in this country today. Huh? That you can go under the guise of mourning to talk all sorts of nonsensical things instead of waiting for an opportunity to go to a baraza kwa soko wa mapali pengine wanataka kwenda. Unachukua nafasi ya mazishi. Hmm? Kwenda kutoa matusi, unaongea siku mzima. Alafu mwishoe, imeingia usiku, unawacha familia kahamgezika. Na nyi munaendelea, munafurai, munafani hilo. Please, 
please be men and women of honor and do the right thing. Give him the decent send-off that he truly deserves as a leader and as a kind and gentle soul. We are supposed to be there to comfort the family, to support the family, right? And to give dignity to a great man. Let me see Nangina Kuongeza. What Fred has said is correct. After the funeral, we shall meet with the family. And I also look forward thereafter to also meeting with you as leaders for you to help guide me in which areas you think we can all work together to ensure that the people of Nyamira live to see the fruits of the work of this great man. So may God bless you all. May God protect and continue to guide this family, especially during this most difficult time. And may you rest assured that you are not standing alone. First and foremost, God will always be with you. Even when everything else fails, never forget that God will be with you. And my own personal assurance that I will also not leave you behind and we shall continue to work together.